Welcome back, guys. This is Felicia Romero. She's the guest uh, today's podcast. And uh, Felicia has been a fit pro. She's been on the cover of I don't know how many magazines. She's gorgeous. And uh, can you introduce yourself a little, Felicia, and what you have going on right now? Absolutely. Thanks so much. I just want to you know, say it's awesome that you have this podcast and this platform to be able to reach to your audience and your tribe. And a little background on me. I have been in the health and fitness space for about 15 years. Um, and I went to Arizona State and I've always been an athlete and graduated from Arizona State with a master's in exercise science. And cool. I just I knew that I loved helping people um, and, you know, started training people at the age of 21, 22 and I just knew that I found my passion in that. My, I was actually studying law at the time. Um, so I have my bachelor's in political science. And That's I was an intern. At, yeah, I was an intern at the House of Representatives. I was wow. really into like politics, have my bachelor's in political science. And I knew after interning and after doing some internships at a law firm here, I knew that that's not what I wanted to do. And throughout that time, especially early on in my journey, I started training people just to make money. You know, I got certified yeah. in NASM and ASM and I knew that I could like make my own schedule and go to school. And the awesome thing about being a trainer is you can, you know, divide your own schedule, take clients when you want. So I was able to do that while going to school, but I, I fell in love with it. And I found yeah. my natural, my, my natural inclination just was to help people. So I remember telling my mom, like, Oh God, I don't want to go to law school. I honestly think I was doing it because it was something that was ingrained in me as a kid. Sure. Like, this is what we're doing. And you're going to go to school and you're going to get an athletic scholarship. You're going to go to, I was always just following the plan that was kind of yeah. set out for me. And so to truly follow my heart was scary. Number one, number two, I felt like I was, you know, I was a first child. And so I was always kind of living up to my mom's what my mom's standards were. And I finally had to just follow my heart, not knowing where it was going to take me. I didn't know yeah. what kind of doors it would open for me. I just knew I wanted to help people. So I followed that. Um, education was really important in my family. So I ended up getting my master's um, in exercise science and then just continued helping people. Years later, I started competing in my first physique competition, fitness competition yeah. at the time. It was, you know, it's figure. Um, right. There's a bunch of different divisions. So when you think of for the, your audience that may not know, I competed in the NPC, which then led me to the IFBB, which is um, the International Federation of Bodybuilding. So when you think of Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, going to the Olympia, that is what I competed in. I started competing cool. and I just... I loved it in the beginning. You know, it's something that I, I didn't have any sort of dieting background. I didn't even know what it was like to diet, quote unquote diet. I come from a Mexican background, so we never <laughs> emphasized like calories or carbs. I so mean, it was just like tamales like, and yeah, we never, I didn't grow up in a, I didn't grow up in a like diet conscious family. Like we That's were active. I was an active yeah. kid. Um, we, we, my mom cooked dinner every night, you know, like I didn't center myself around food, nor were we conscious about it. We were just yeah. really active. You know, I, we never really, I, I was never really, you know, like suffered from obesity or anything like that or any sort of health issues. It was never something that was ingrained in us, sure. but you know, I had my first bout of dieting for my first competition. So I just had that natural body type for that sort of competition. So I had the broad shoulders, um, uh, the smaller waist, the taper. And, and so I just naturally gravitated towards that. And sure. I did really well. And I turned pro at my very first national show, which was the USA. That's insane. In, that's yeah, just, my how, very that's first just show. nuts. I were, know. You like, were you like me for real? Or were you oh, like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I was like in shock. Like they have video. My, my, I would have to find it. I don't even know where it's at. But they have sure. video of me. Like my eyes were like a deer in headlights. I'm like, Oh my yeah. gosh, I knew I was, you know, I knew I was up there cause I was first call out, but I, no way. Like, could I win this? Like, what does this even mean? I didn't even know what it meant to be a pro at that level. I just did it because it was what you did after you do well at an, at a local show. Sure. You do nationals. Yeah. I mean, so I'm just like, Oh, naturally, naturally I would just go do that. Yeah. yeah. And I loved the challenge and I loved competing. I'm a natural athlete in that sense where I just yeah. want to always do better. Right. So, um, and then that was just a whirlwind. I had no idea what I was getting into. Again, like I said, I had no idea what it was to be a pro. So I turned pro and literally within hours right there in the lobby after turning pro, I was scouted by Muscle and Fitness Hers, editor in chief. Yeah. Um, a couple weeks later, I was shooting my first cover for Muscle and Fitness Hers. 
and then, you know, nine years in the industry. So nine years, I had um, five pro wins. I was placed top uh, top four in the Olympia and the Figure International, um, eight magazine covers, and just a really amazing career that had really led, like opened the doors for a lot of different things. Um, over the years, I've been able to start and open gyms from the ground up. Um, I've done a ton of public speaking all in the diet space. And obviously towards the end of my career, I, and I know we'll probably get into it, but I had a ton of health issues because anything extreme in any way is, 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 is going to set you up for failure. So yeah. I yeah. live that extreme lifestyle for a long time. Right. I competed. Yeah. Nine years is a while. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't compete for that long unless you're the, the male, the guys compete for that. Right. Long. Well, females, I mean, a guy can keep, you know, four and a half percent body fat for basically his entire life. Uh, a girl right. trying to keep, you know, underneath nine is going to be, she's going to give yeah. up a certain amount of health to be able to stay there. It is. Oh yeah. I mean, there is absolutely a ton of sacrifice that happens. Uh -huh. Right. And so I just uh, probably competed two years too long and sure. I should have probably stopped after the 2010 Olympia where I placed fifth. And after that competition is when my health went downhill. And so, yeah. I, but I competed two years after that. So I didn't end up retiring until 2012. And my, my insides were just a mess. Metabolism, yeah. hormones, thyroid, yeah. everything. So um, looking back yeah, now, I've had, oops, go ahead. Look at, looking back now, would you say that like you probably could have trusted your intuition or do you think it was just oh, like yeah. you were kind of like deer in the headlights or just, or like your like your athletes, like all athletes have that certain stubbornness to not like give yeah. up, you know? Like, do you think oh, some yeah. of that kind of got in the way of you having to face the yes. the the reality oh. of the scenario? Absolutely, I had all the signs. Uh, yeah. Absolutely, my instinct and my intuition was telling me to stop. Yeah. But see, at the time, uh, you know, in my twenties and and early into my thirties, I was like third, like twenty nine, thirty. I was so defined by the stage. And again, like I said, I was, sure. I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but I always was, tr I was always wanting to achieve something. I always, yeah. I had to keep working towards something. I could never just bask in the now, like <laughs> after doing really well and, and competing and like, Oh, placed in top four at the figure international, this is top four in the world at the Olympia. Like who gets this chance? Yeah. I like after the competition was over, I was like, what's next? What am I doing? I, I would never just like smell the roses, right? Stop and smell sure. the roses. So I was constantly looking for the next. So at that time, I was always so defined by my body. And I felt, I felt like if I wasn't in shape, uh, who was I, right? Or if I wasn't yeah. competing or doing well, like That's who was I? That's an interesting phrase. Like if I wasn't in shape, who was I? Because uh, like right. you can still be in shape. Like you can still yeah. focus on health and not, uh, and not be, have an eight pack, let's say, or, you know. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, totally. And I didn't know how to separate that at that time. Sure. I, I defined my, by myself physically and yeah. I defined by what I was accomplishing. And I also was in that space of like, oh, if I'm not in shape, then, you know, mag quote unquote magazines won't want to use me anymore. I'll become irrelevant. And I think a lot of people who have been kind of at the top in their play, in their space, uh -huh. they, they fear that. They fear yeah. of becoming not relevant anymore they fear just away so does. and that's sad oh we cut out a little bit oh come back this this is so good i that i oh, yeah. that identity yeah oh we're cutting out here a little bit Felicia. oh you are yeah sorry yeah that's oh okay. we're back now we're good Yay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so my identity was that person who was on stage. So I had a hard time separating that. So I always tell my, you know, when I've talked about this before, remember Brett Favre with Green Bay Packers, he like, yeah. didn't, he couldn't quit. Like he never right. like, like, okay, you should probably retire. Yeah. But he like couldn't. Right. And so right. I was that space. Obviously I'm not the level of Brett Favre, but it's yeah. that mentality of being an athlete and being uh -huh. always on top and achieving and doing. It's like, yeah. I couldn't give that up. But yeah. at the time, two years after that, 2012, my body forced me to stop. And that's right. when I finally did. Yeah, that's interesting because, like, that's uh, it was the same thing with football for me. Like, when football was over, I was just kind of like, wait, what the hell? Like, mm -hmm. like who am I? What is this? Yeah. What do I do? How is this happening? Like, well, uh, yeah, it was, it was totally. really interesting. And You know, and, a lot uh, of athletes go through that. A lot of athletes, yeah. like, when they're done, especially, like, you know, when their whole life has been from when they were kids, they were mm -hmm. playing to college, to 
than you know the NFL or whatever right. is pro sport when they're done and they're reco- they don't know what to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. They don't know like how well, your to whole spend life their has time. been wrapped up in this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah spend your yeah. time is a is a great example. It's like wait, why? Uh, I remember for probably like two years, I had worked out. I started working out when I was like 10 years old. I thought lifting was like, you know, our, I, I saw Sylvester Sloan and Arnold Schwarzenegger, John Van Damme and all those guys. I was like, I want to be like that so bad. Anyway, uh, where was I going with that? Anyway, uh, oh, so after football was over, I was like, why would, like, why would I work out now? Mm-hmm. Like, what's the point? Right. You know? Right, right. And, uh, absolutely. It's very interesting, the, the mind play that can happen in there. It's pretty wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, Absolutely. But so how did it, so how did you deal with it? So you got, you got hit with this, to this health, with these health ramifications and were they like, you're not going to be able to, what was the, like, what was that process like? I guess I can just let you explain. Yeah. And I have very specific moments. So after I competed in my very last show in 2012, you know, I remember I had, you know, as a female, when you're that low in body fat and when you're doing such extreme things, I had lost yeah. my period for years, right? So I right. wasn't getting a menstrual cycle. Which is probably I... awesome to a certain extent. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I and think it like, was just... like being a dude is fantastic in that department. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're, I mean, as a female, hormones are, and I have a, some awesome stories about hormones that we can get into in a little bit. But, yeah, please. You know, my, my, my hormones were completely screwed up. So, I, you know, what happened was after the competition was done, I remember going to the doctor because I was so tired. I could fall asleep at 10 o'clock in the morning after a good night's sleep. Yeah. I had gained about 40 pounds in six 40? weeks. 40? Four zero? Yeah. Four in six weeks? Zero. In wow. six weeks. I remember just feeling so bloated, so tired, so yeah. brain fog. Like I was completely, I was a mess. Yeah. So when I, when I went to the doctor and I finally was just stopped being in denial about these things, cause I always thought, well, okay, I gained all this weight. I just need to go on a diet again. I need to go on my competition diet. Right. And a lot of women resort back to that. Like, oh, I just got to work out yeah. harder and I have to eat less. Yeah. Well, the more I did that, the harder right. I worked out, the less I ate, the worse I got. And yeah. it was because my, my adrenals were so taxed my hormones, yeah. everything affected each other. So because I was so, I was exuding more than I was taking in. So I was exerting more energy than I was consuming. Yeah. After a while that catches up with you. So right. first off my adrenals were affected, which affected my hormones and affected my thyroid. So I had what was called, um, there's a name for it, but I'll just call it secondary hypothyroidism, which okay. is in turn brought on by stressful events or yeah. extreme lifestyle, which is what I was yeah. doing. So literally, consuming, you know, such low amount of calories. And so let me just preface this by saying by the end of my competition years, my body wasn't working like it did when I first started. So I could just think about eating healthy and my body would change towards the end of my career. I had to keep going more extreme. I had to lower my carbs even more to the point where I wasn't eating any carbs and I had to lower my fats and I had to do two hours of cardio a day because my body was not responding. Two hours is a long time. That's a, that's a lot of cardio. That sounds miserable. Yeah. Uh. Oh, it was horrible. I can I can honestly say to this day now, I don't do any cardio anymore. Yeah. I I don't do any steady state cardio. I mean, yeah. I get I, I'm active, but I don't do any of the traditional right. cardio that I did. You might as well get things. it if you're like you're gonna it, if you have an after lifestyle where you're having fun. You might as well mm-hmm. get it from your fun. Yeah, I absolutely get it from my fun now. You yeah. know, and I love incorporating it within my workouts. My workouts are about thirty minutes long. Ooh. I keep my heart rate going. I'm active. I'm on yeah. the go all day. I mean, I, and I feel great. And yeah. so that's my that's where I kind of thrive. Cool. Um, but yeah, my body just forced me to quit, and I was just you know plagued with a bunch of health issues yeah. that I spent years healing, and that's yeah. where I'm at now. Yeah, that's wild. I mean, 40 pounds on you. I, I don't know how tall you are, but like I'm six, four. Five, three. And uh, yeah, so, so I'm a, I'm a little bit over a foot taller than you. And if you put 40 pounds on me, you would notice like that. So yeah. that's, that's yeah. wild. Um, but more than oh, that probably yeah. was the brain fog and the, and just feeling mm-hmm. tired all the time. Just like, it, mm-hmm. it just, it's, that's a miserable feeling. Yeah. Oh, and then back to hormones. So I don't mean to jump around, but no, years I'm later. A, tangents are great. <laughs> yes. So what taught me, what made me think about that was years later. So this was just in 2016 and this is after I've healed. So I'm no longer on thyroid medication. My, my metabolism is great. I'm, I feel great. I, I'm no longer, you know, having all the health issues. 
I was approached by um, a reality TV called Fit to Fat to Fit. Yeah. So basically it was, I was on season two of Fit to Fat to Fit. So the oh, premise cool. of the show is I had to gain weight for a client and then in turn we would lose weight together. So I had to put yeah. myself in the shoes of a potential client. Well, that client happened to be my sister. And that's one of the main reasons oh, cool. why I did it was I did it for a family member and right. she was about a hundred pounds overweight. Um, okay. She started with, she was at about 240 when we started and I put on the weight for her. So through the course of that, so it was an eight month project, four months to gain weight and basically adopt her lifestyle, which was uh -huh. no activity and just gluttonous eating, sure. you know, just um, fast food and whatever. Right. And then four months to lose the weight with her. Right. So during that process, they had doctors, you know, I had doctor's appointments, things like that. So in the beginning of the process, this is just back to the hormones. My hormones were normal. I had normal estrogen levels. My, my testosterone was a good amount for a female. I felt good. good. My cortisol right. levels were good. My thyroid levels were normal. Um, when I got my blood tested at the end of that four months of, and I gained about 30 pounds, okay. um, and, but it was more just, bo I just, my body fat, um, sure. de increased my estrogen went through the roof. My testosterone decreased back to what it was when years ago, when I, you know, was not feeling well, my cortisol levels were all over the place. My glucose levels were crazy high. Um, it, it, it's crazy. And that was four months of inactivity and just eating whatever. And it had a huge effect on my hormones again. So I tell people not just even for the effect, you know, cause I think when we take away all of our goals, take away what, what how we want to look physically, and let's say we right. just want to feel better, right. eating healthy and treating your body with respect just makes sense, right? And so, yeah. and I talk about the implications of that and what it did to my hormones and our insides. And and I again, I, I don't really promote diet, quote unquote, diet mentality, sure. but just being a healthy person, you know, just being a healthy human right. being is going to go a long way and have such a huge effect on and, how we are physically and mentally. Yeah. And don't you think if you put the, if you put the focus on health first and physique second, yes. then you'll probably end up getting the physique, basically oh, the physique absolutely. that you did want, maybe not get on stage in a bikini, but, or get yeah. on stage in your, you know, underwear, whatever. Um, but yeah. there's a lot that would go into that anyway. I mean, there, there's a, oh, there's yeah. a lot of extremes that you take there. Like, uh, oh, yeah. Like, how much sodium is in your body, the potassium. Mm -hmm. and Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah, I mean, if we focus on that internal health, of course, the byproduct will be some physical changes. Right. And so, yeah, absolutely. It's amazing but that was just that also awesome. with, with your huge background of exercise and nutrition and all this and going through the health scare and then getting it all back, uh, like getting your shit together and then, and then going on four months where you're just going to let it all fall to pieces and then it still came back to haunt you and then what happened after that though like what uh you know what, what it, was, it was like? it was a pretty crazy experience and i document this or i documented it at the time um i was able to lose you know I, I lost the weight obviously i just ate healthy again i stopped eating fast food and just started being active sure. my sister lost about 80 pounds and she's been able oh, good to for her off. awesome her lifestyle is so different now whereas before she'd go home after work and play video games or watch tv she now she plays softball a couple nights a week. Nice. Her and her boyfriend are super active. She doesn't eat yeah. any more fast food. So her her life and the way she feels is forever changed. For me, I you know was able to yeah. to lose the weight and lose the body fat, but it was crazy because I had started developing anxiety again from all of the food and just the sure. in the healthy and just not being able. And I use exercise as a form of anxiety relief. And it took me a couple months to after the filming was over to get myself back. Um, and honestly, it's just, it's habits, it's routine. I started to get into the habit of just sitting and it, you, it really has to come from within to make those changes, yeah. taking action each and every day to just make those little changes to feel better. Um, but I got myself back. Like everything is normal again. Everything's fine. And I'm actually, I'm glad I went through it. I can't say I would ever do that again. Sure. I'm glad I did it so that I can talk about it now and sure, yeah. you know, yeah. tell people about my experience. But um, but yeah, I'm, I'm definitely back to, you know, my old self. So that's good. Well, there had to be a, quite a bit of a kind of mental exploration just to be able to gain the first 30, to gain that 30 pounds. Right. I mean, like yeah. you're, you're basically betraying this, uh, this idea that you have to be fit and to get yeah. to, to gain the weight. And then you've got to go back yeah. on that again. So, uh -huh. um, yeah, it was, it was, it, it was very wild because, 
And and the reason I was able to do it, because I did it for her, number one, yeah. but I was able to do it because I didn't, I was able to, I worked through all of my body image issues. I was right. able to do it. I didn't, I didn't attach myself to a physical look. I was like, okay, right. I'm going to do this for a short amount of time. I'm no fitness. I'm able to get myself back into quote unquote shape. I can do this, you know, but it was, it, it was very scary in a sense that I didn't realize how actually at the time, how hard it is to gain weight when oh, you're sure. actually, when you're actually trying to put on weight, it is very difficult. You know, my right. body had a set point and I was able to put on 10 pounds pretty quickly, but anything above that was like yeah. process. Like I yeah. had to pretty much eat all day. And it, I, it was one of those things where I actually started getting kind of sick because I had to eat so I much. Bet. My body, I mean, four pounds, it's not a normal, it's not normal to do that. Right. You know? So it was one of those things where I just got tired of eating and yeah, I bet. Uh, yeah, it was just very tough to actually put the weight on, which was sure. a really kind of a crazy place to be because I had spent so many years, you know, when women are like, oh, wow, we're always working and trying to lose weight. You're trying to put on weight. That's a whole yeah. different mindset. Right. And right. so, um, but yeah, it was, it was quite the ride. Do you think, okay. And somebody's going to come on here and say, uh, she's this little tiny thing. She has, a, she, she's like that stupid fly. won't get out of my face. We like, uh, <laughs> We're in the gym now. We have this big overhead door right here. It's completely open. All the windows are open. Like it's like you're yeah. basically outside <laughs> right now. So. Um, right. But some somebody's going to come on here and they're going to be like, listen to her, this little skinny mini, uh, saying how hard it is to gain weight and blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. blah. And uh, yeah. but like I don't know. Like you look at you on the magazine covers and like sex sells and you're you're, you're super pretty and you're on there and, and and all that. But there's a difference in your presence in the, on those magazines covers from then to yeah. your Instagram now, you know, yeah. and like, why do you suppose that is? It's, it's, it's really the lifestyle and you gotta, you gotta also take into account the magazines, you know, they're, they're, especially back in the day when I modeled, I feel like there's this level of body acceptance now and, um, sure where we aren't so hyper-focused on this extremely lean look, right? So for me back then, everything was about lean. Like you couldn't sure. you couldn't model or compete if you were not lean and like yeah. look the part. Yeah. So the person back then, that was a, such an extreme lifestyle that I don't ever want to go back to, number one. Yeah. Number two, you know, it's a level of sacrifice and, and most people don't want to do that and or maybe quote unquote can't do that because it's just you're sacrificing so much. But, you know, where I was now versus where I was back then is I don't I don't need to prove to myself or prove anybody that I I need to look a certain way. And yeah. because my health was at its worst, I don't ever want to take my health for granted again. Yeah. So I would choose health over a look any day. And sure. for me, yeah. you know, yeah. it's one of those things where it took me like feeling my worst in order for me to really take charge and say, you know what, I don't want to do that. And nor do I suggest it, which is why I have my podcast now, a platform diet dropout, which right. talks about this. It talks about self-acceptance and, you know, but I even talk about to the diet culture. Cause I feel like, you know, it can go both ways. I feel like there's so much shaming nowadays. Yeah. There's so many opinions that, you know, if you talk about wanting to, you know, jump on a diet, people attack you like, Oh, keto isn't good or paleo. Like let people make their own choices. You know, yeah. people are going to find what works for them. I don't ever judge or shame anybody. If you find that, you know, you lost weight on keto and you feel amazing, yeah. By all means, do it. You know, yeah. here's maybe exactly. some of the ramifications here, what, what might happen. But if you enjoy it, go yeah. for it. So cool. I'm all for letting people find out what works for them. Yeah. Yeah. Edu like, like the way that we think about it in here is we're going to give them a bunch of information and then they can decide for themselves. But ultimately, right. it's not our decision. It's, it's theirs. Right. Yeah. right. Absolutely. And like where, where does the internal external sort of focus come into play for you? Like, uh, like obviously during your modeling career, like you're, you're mostly externally focused. You're trying to look a certain way and, mm -hmm. but health is really an internal thing. Like how do people get to the point where they can, uh, kind of explore this sort of internal external thing? Yeah. You know, and that's where, such a good maybe question. where the beauty comes from. I don't know. Uh, that yeah. might sound a little cliche and cheesy. No, no, not at all. And, and honestly, it's a powerful one because it really does mm -hmm. come with your mental health. And yeah. I think mental health is so overlooked nowadays, you know, we just sort of brush it off, like, because, you know, 
it's the whole like when I achieve this certain weight, I'll be happy. Yeah. And you're, maybe you're not happy at this point, but yeah. trust me, if you're not happy now, you're not going to be happy when you nope. lose the 10 pounds. Yeah. You lose if you're not, it, it'll never be enough. It'll never, ever be enough. And this yeah. is coming from somebody who lived that. Right. And I was never satisfied, never yeah. happy. I could be in the best physical shape, not yeah. happy. I was 40 pounds heavier, not happy. Like yeah. there it has to be something more. And I actually just did a post on this today. Like happiness has to come from within. And it comes from a level of mental awareness where you have worked on yourself, you have put in the self-work, you put in the personal development, you've become aware of your feelings and who you are. And it's just a practice of mindfulness. And I know that we, you know, mindfulness is kind of thrown around here and there, but it, it sure. truly is that, that, that level of self-work that comes in that you're finally just you know, I, I'm a firm believer that you can still accept yourself, accept who you are and what you are while still working towards your goals oh, and working yeah. towards maybe the body you desire. Oh, totally. And yeah. I, I really do think that that level of internal work has to start in your mind and your mental health. Yeah. And mental health is so important because we live in a, a society today where, you know, a lot of people suffer from or say they suffer from maybe not clinically depressed, but they'll, oh, I'm not happy. I'm sure. depressed. I have anxiety today. It's, you know, I'm, I, I'm, they're always chasing something. And I feel like with that said, I feel like we live in a, in a society where we always want those like quick wins or the quick yeah. success or the, the quick, you know, yeah, everybody's looking the, for the rush. Every, yeah. Yeah, everybody. And so, you know, it's just a level of mental awareness. You know, if I could just answer that question, I, I tend to go off on tangent sometimes because then I'll get all the Tangents thoughts, are great. But... Tangents are great. Like, uh, like, I always go on like tangents. Yeah, I'm a, but. I'm a master of tangents, so maybe we're just a, yeah. we're, we're a bad combo. I'm not <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my God, I, I can talk about this. I can talk about that. Yeah. But it really does come from a level of just mental health and mental yeah. awareness. And now, so this brings up another thing is most people, I mean, if we pulled a thousand people off the street, you know, how many of them haven't explored or haven't had the, you know, taken the, the chance or had the guts to really push themselves out and explore this new area of their, of their mind or, you know, find what's right. internal. And so they keep looking for the external thing to get the rush. Yeah. Um, yeah. Why aren't more people like, like how much courage did it take you to really just like step out and be like, I'm going to do this? Like oh, I'm going to explore this, this, this yeah. mind thing, or well, were you forced into it? 